Hey guys, it's Katie, and I'm here today to do something that I should have done a long time ago, and that is to tell you about my reading journey slash my reading evolution. I kind of got this idea on my own, but I also got it through watching Spencer from Common Spence's channel because he did something similar several months ago, and I just decided to kind of hop on board that because it might be a good idea to just kind of let you know about kind of how I became the reader that I am today. So what better place to do it in than my childhood bedroom where I did all of my reading and I have so many fond memories of reading in here. And uh, yeah, so let's just kind of jump right in. So I've been a reader for as long as I can remember. Reader in the sense that I used to listen to stories, I used to make up stories, I used to just grab mo like so many different books off the shelf and just read them on a whim. And so I've, because I've always had a very, very curious mind. I've always wanted to understand things, I guess. So I mean, before I could actually read the words on a page, my parents and my grandmother would read to me. And that started with picture books and then it gradually worked its way up to chapter books. And it was just a really, really good way to bond, and it, just re it was just a great activity for us to do together. My dad was more the one who would make up stories for me, or with me, and my grandma and my mom were the ones who would actually, like, read from a physical book with me. And then my grandma would even go so far sometimes as to create shows surrounding stories. So we did, like, puppet shows here and there from time to time one time surrounding a poem that I can still recite perfectly. It's called The Naughty Soap Song. Ask me about it if you're interested. <laughs> and some of the first memories that I have of actually reading with my mom were um, The Wind Boy, a chapter book that we, would, we read at night. I would sit in her lap and just kind of follow along and kind of try to figure out what was going on with our life. And then um, I really, really got into, of course, Harry Potter. Because Harry Potter came out when I was, like, five. And that's just something that my mom and I really bonded over. We read the first four books together, and then I read five through seven on my own. But we'd still talk about them, because she was as invested in the story as I was. And so we would just talk about them constantly. And then, of course, that was all the rage at school, so... Just Harry Potter consumed my life, and also, in weird ways, I connected with Harry because <laughs> I could do a British accent. I had a blatant scar on my forehead. It's still there. It's so slightly less visible, but if you're interested, it's this guy. I also had glasses, and at that time, they were very round glasses, and then I also got like severe searing head pain, which I still do due to my migraines. So <laughs> I really connected with Harry and that I just, I just loved the magic. It just really hooked me from very, very early on. And it didn't, and it helped also that I got to meet JK when I was a kid. Um, we went, we got to, we found out about a book signing that was happening close by and then we went and I got two of my books signed. And that was a really great experience. I remember it actually. That was a large chunk of my childhood. I mean, I read a lot of other books at school. I picked up the like tiny abridged versions of classics like The Last of the Mohicans and David Copperfield and Three Musketeers. I just, there were these tiny little books that I shouldn't have been able to read at the time that I was reading them, but I did. And, uh, I mean, they might have taken me a bit of a long time, but I was really glad that I got through them. When I was younger, I just kind of read a lot of, like, random stories. It wasn't really the same thing over and over again. Or, I mean, it wasn't of a specific genre. It was just kind of what it was. When I was still in, like, second or third grade, that's kind of when Roald Dahl started to come out. So we would have read aloud at school, which was basically our teacher would spend roughly an hour reading to us at the end of the day, or every other day. It was a couple of times a week. And so we read a lot of Roald Dahl. We read Boy, we read The Witches, 
read a lot of really fun books and I just remember really really enjoying them. And Roald Dahl was definitely someone that I loved. When I was in fourth, fifth grade, I switched schools. I did, I had a lot of switching school adventures. And uh, as I said, over that summer I read Shiloh and it was not about that life. It was too gentle of a soul for that and I was just not having it with that book. I don't even think I finished it. So I just put that down. Hmm. Then I got, I started, that's kind of around the time I also started getting into the Magic Treehouse series. I got the first, I got, what, two books in the span of like a week, I think. My mom was always getting me books that she thought I'd like. And I got two books from that series, Twister on Tuesday and Revolutionary War on Wednesday. They were kind of a back-to-back -back thing, and I really enjoyed them. That was a fan. Another school, and this was like fourth grade. <laughs> And that's about the time that I also started to really get into The Hobbit. And The Hobbit, along with the Magic Treehouse series, really, really shaped me, my life, and my life as a reader. Reading The Hobbit is really when I started to fall in love, for, fall in love with other fantasy that wasn't Harry Potter. I read The Hobbit, I loved it. Chapter 5 will forever be my favorite. And for those of you who are like, what's chapter five? Remind me. Or if you haven't read it, close your ears. Chapter five is the Riddles in the Dark chapter, which is where Gollum and Bilbo are just having their riddle game. And it ends with Bilbo keeping and ultimately finding and keeping the ring. I just, I don't know what it was, but I loved that chapter with my soul. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Was a fan. And that's also when I first started to get into reading um, audiobooks. I think my mom just decided to have me try them and I fell asleep pretty much every time. I would be laying on the floor listening and then I'd nod off. And I figured out that I could not do audiobooks unless I was actually physically reading the book with it. And that's what I ended up doing with The Lord of the Rings. It was the best decision. After The Hobbit, that's also when I just started to get it in, getting into Roald Dahl a lot more. So I devoured the BFG and I reread the BFG multiple times. And then I read this like dog sitters club series or something funky like that. It was also my horse phase, so that's when I read the bigger version of Black Beauty and the bigger version of Peter Pan and the slightly bigger version of The Three Musketeers. Like it was just kind of my like jumpstart classics or whatever they were called phase because we would still go to the Cayman Islands a lot and I was really, really into that six books and as I said, horse books. So as I said, Black Beauty, and then I read this book called like, something lightning. I don't even, I don't even remember what it was called. Obviously I didn't like it that much. And then I read, of course, The Black Stallion. So I just went through, of course, my horse phase. Cause that's also when I really started to get into horseback riding a lot more. So of course I would read more of those. And I read like Islands of the Blue Dolphins. I just, I had a very weird reading phase from about early on all the way up to, oh, sixth, seventh grade. I just didn't really have a genre or if I, people just kept trying to get me into a genre, but I just was not a fan. But also in fourth and fifth grade, I was really into the animal arc series because yes, I don't know a ton of people that have read those, but they're great and I would recommend them. I also found my favorite book of that period of time. In fifth grade, I read this book called No Flying in the House and it literally became my favorite book. I would read it over and over and over again. For some reason, it just captivated my soul. And so I was a fan. 
And that's also, remember I totally told you about that mystery book I read that one time called The Year of the Wolf that no longer exists no matter where I look for it? Well, that was about the time that I read that book too. So, I mean, fourth grade, fifth grade was a very, very unusual period of time. And in fifth grade, I really started to get sick a lot. I had strep throat, I had a lot of migraines, I had severe dizziness, I had scarlet fever. Yes, that is a thing that still exists. And I think I even had like sinus infections, I don't even know. I was just a mess in fifth grade. So I missed a fair amount of school. <sighs> and uh, so I spent a lot of time reading. And then I also switched schools again, as you do. I read The Hobbit, I read The Fellowship of the Ring, started The Two Towers, and then devoured the entire Magic Treehouse series. So I, that was a very impactful period of time in my life because reading The Hobbit and the beginning of The Lord of the Rings really set me onto the path of loving history and medieval things. Well, reading The Hobbit, the beginning of The Lord of the Rings, and the Magic Treehouse books really set me on the path of loving history and, in particular, the Middle Ages. Yes, it was a really pivotal point in my life. And then, come sixth grade, I ended up having to do a report. I had to just pick a, to do a research project of some kind. And I had the hardest time deciding what I wanted to come up, what I wanted to do. And ultimately, I ended up deciding on Middle Ages and things like that. I just started doing research, and then before I knew it, it I was doing that as my topic. I was like, cool. And I built a castle. And as, you know, the irony of lots of castles from that time being in ruins at this point, so is mine. It took me, what, seven months to build and it ended up in the dumpster destroyed. Sixth grade introduced me to another book that I really, really liked a lot called The Star of Kazan by Ava Ibbotson. It became the next book that I would read over and over and over and over again, and I just loved that book. And then I think I also might have started His Dark Materials at that point, and I really, I loved the first book. I loved the first book. The Golden Compass was my jam. The Subtle Knife and the Ember Spyglass, for some reason, they just weren't as good to me. I don't know why. And I haven't reread them since. I'm thinking maybe I will. But another series that I started reading around sixth grade was the series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. And that was all due to a prompting of a friend of mine. I devoured those books, except for the last two. For some reason, I just never read The Penultimate Peril nor The End. So, I mean, I know what happened, but I never read the last two, and that's just weird. What I had to do was read those, so I was just really excited about that. And of course, I was reading other, like, of those different classics collections, the abridged version ones that are, like, this big or whatever, but like huge print. Um, because we had a bunch of I went through a bunch of different abridged classics stuff when I was younger. So I don't even know. In the eighth grade. Occasionally rereading Harry Potter if I did that at all. But then I also really, really, really got into Dan Brown in seventh grade, I believe. I read uh, The Da Vinci Code, loved it, despite going to a Catholic school and everyone telling me that I was going to go to hell because I was reading this book, because the church, the Catholic church, is just not a fan of that. I, hmm, I, ha I got judged by literally everyone for reading that book and I just did not care. And after eighth grade, I was just rereading a lot 
but then as I said I really started to get into Dan Brown and then I was mostly just reading my books for school that you know you either love or you don't and I just didn't care I was so burnt out at that point and I was concerned with other extracurriculars I was just into other things at the time so I and then the Harry Potter book was released and of course I devoured that before I went to high school and then I got to high school and then this is really when my reading went downhill as in I really didn't besides school reading I reread the entire Harry Potter series once a year and I read the rest of Dan Brown's books like when I was in Italy my sophomore year over summer I read Angels and Demons and Deception Point I believe <laughs> later I read the Dig Digital Fortress and I think that was all that was out at the time but then I read a lot of like other books I think that was when I first read high school was when I first read the, the Artemis Fowl books I'm pretty sure I read like I devoured the first three on a vacation I went to that was really good another book I mean I was just kind of like as I said all over the place in high school I mostly just reread Harry Potter literally every year and that was pretty much it I tried to get into the Silmarillion and Lord of the Rings again reread them and read this read the Silmarillion for the first time and reread the Lord of the Rings and I just was not getting anywhere with it because I just didn't have the motivation felt like I didn't have the time I read Twilight because my high school was beyond and I mean beyond obsessed with Twilight and then I also read what was called the forensic files a friend of mine was reading it and I was really really into this one TV show at the time so she's like hey you should read this series I'm like okay cool so she lent them to me and I got through those really quickly got to college and it was mostly doing my school reading but I read a few more Dan Browns as they came out I think it was The Lost Symbol and then Inferno and then I read the Lord of the Rings and the Silmarillion the summer between my junior and senior year are effect. I also I think that's about all I really read or yeah yeah no that was about all I read at that point and post college is when I really 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 started to get back into reading again and that was all due to my friend recommending me a bunch of series and then me just browsing my bookshelf and then finding booktube but mostly I can attribute getting back into reading to my one friend from undergrad she recommended to me the Realm of the Elderling series which you guys know I love and adore and if you don't I'm gonna link my entire ROTE playlist up above for you and you should go watch every single video I have ever done on that series or literally just watch like any video on my channel because I mention it in literally every video. She also introduced me to the Animorph series or I should say reintroduced because I I'd always seen them at the classic book fairs but this was during Katie's weird reading period back in like fourth fifth grade that they were like super popular and I just looked at the covers and I was like no those are creepy and walked away <laughs> but she got me into those and there are several other books that she's recommended to me that are just sitting on my TBR. <sighs> And I'd like to just say the rest is history. And that's pretty true because I've been reading pretty regularly ever since I got out of college. And now we're at where I'm at. But one other thing I will mention that is potentially strange for a lot of people is I am avidly, avidly into fanfic. And I feel like I couldn't, I can't talk about my reading journey without talking about my relationship with fanfic because it's a very, very important one. So way back when in freshman year of high school, I learned about fanfic and kind of 
what it was and everything. I know a lot of people were into the fanfic scene in terms of like Harry Potter and I got there but it wasn't the first fandom that I read for. So I was talking about a ship that I had at the time. I was talking about it with a friend and then another classmate overheard and she's like, Katie, have you ever heard of fanfic? And I'm like, no, what's that? And so she told me about it. And these were the days when fanfiction.net, which is still around, but people are using less and less of, but that's besides the point. So over winter break, I looked into it and I fell into a hole and I never left the hole. So I read Bones fanfic for a solid three years before I kind of started to trickle off. And then I also started to get into some Harry Potter ones. I read for a ship that I no longer really ship. And then I got into Glee. And then I got into Sherlock. And a few like other smattering ones here and there. Then of course I read for MCU. That might be it. Those are the main ones that I think I've had over the years. I definitely still read a lot. Um, but the reason I'm telling you about my fan about fanfic in this is because it really, really, really helped me during a period of time when I needed it. I loved the characters so much that I just wanted more content so badly. I was going through a very rough time and I was always able to just click on a fanfic and just let myself be in it for a couple of hours or a couple of days depending on the length. Now there are some I don't really read for anymore. I don't really read for Bones or Glee as much anymore. I am still very 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 much in the Sherlock fandom and the MCU fandom. And of course I have my ships that I read for. But not only was I reading for it, but I also dabbled in writing a little bit because that's something that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed for at a time of my life before I started to feel incredibly insecure about my writing skills and just just not finding the time to do it anymore or just getting f constantly more and more frustrated with the process. So I just, I still dabble in writing, but it's all significantly less than I used to. Now, when I feel when I'm feeling sad or need a pick me up, I don't turn to books. I turn to fanfic. And it's just something that I know will always be there for me and will be a huge part of my life. Now that I'm back into books, I've kind of actually started to notice a pattern in myself over the last couple of years like when I tend to fall more into like I don't want to call them, I don't want to call them slumps because I'm still reading but when I need I when I need fanfic more than I need books I know a lot of people in the book community diss fanfic in a lot of ways because I don't you know because of all the usual reasons I mean even authors do it and I understand where the authors are coming from people say like oh that thing is like a really really bad fanfic and I'm like there you go again make giving fanfic a bad name Anyway, whatever. So anyway, that's just kind of my general journey. As you can see, I've had a very strange relationship with books. And then of course I brought in, I brought in fanfic to the mix. And now I have a nice balance between the two. And both of them have their place, both of them have their purpose, and both of them are there when I need them or want them. So yeah, now you kind of know where I am, where I'm at today and kind of how I got super into the genres that I'm into because of course I'm very into classics. That's pretty much been an ongoing thing from the time I was like six all the way up to now and it's ongoing. And then, of course, fantasy, and that started with Harry Potter, but I didn't fully understand that there's, like, all this other fantasy out there to be explored until I was, like, nine or ten. 
And then, of course, I got into uh, historical fiction. That was, I think, also on and off from the time I was pretty young, but I didn't fully solidify it until I was about 10. And then I got into thrillers, mystery thrillers, thing, hybrid things like Dan Brown's books. And that wasn't until seventh grade. And I actually, out of out of the four that I just mentioned, those are what I pick up the least because I am pickier with them. I am looking for a very specific thing. I also noticed that I am pickier with some things versus others. Okay, this video was kind of all over the place, but I hope you got a little bit of a flavor of kind of what my reading journey was like and how I got to the place that where I'm at today, how I got into the genres that I'm into, and uh, just overall how I became the reader that I am. And uh, I'd be curious to know what some of your reading journeys are like, if you had something similar to me or if you had something completely different, just let me know in the comments or if you're so inclined, make your own video because the more the merrier, the more we learn about each other, the stronger this community becomes, I think. But yeah, that's about all I've got. You know the drill at this point. And I will come back with another video for you guys again soon. Okay, bye!